chapter 21, verse 1. Then I saw a great white throne and the one who sat on it. The earth and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Mr. Price was a complex man. His best known qualities were his unswerving commitment to the Catholic faith and to the attainment of independence for Belize, and after that was achieved to its continued development. He was a man of extraordinary vision, a born leader who remained resolute in the face of adversity and hardship. His humility and integrity were legendary and it was well known that he had absolutely no regard for material wealth. The most striking thing about him was, however, his genuine concern for the well-being of his fellow man as being the highest object of God's creation and his continued efforts to bring out the best in all the people he encountered. His personal interest included music and reading, and in his early, earlier years, the sport of horse racing even at one time owning a horse. He was George to his siblings and Uncle George to the rest of us. Our family held him in high regard and to some extent in awe. We could not always agree with his views, but generally had to admit that he would often see things which we did not. It is customary to end a eulogy with a quotation of the deceased. And in view of the many quotations of Mr. Price heard during the last week, this is indeed an impossible task. Two, however, are here offered. The first was his response to a question from a family member last year on the 29th anniversary of Belize's independence as to how he felt looking back over the entire struggle for independence. He said, quote, I have no regrets. I did what I had to do. And with the help of God and the support of the people, we achieved our just objective." Unquote. A better one, however, might be his response to the question posed by a foreign journalist some time ago as to how he would like to be remembered. Mr. Price said he would be in favor of his epitaph reading, quote, a good Belizean who went through life on a pilgrimage and who left the world a better place than he found it." Unquote. We would all agree that Mr. Price did just that. And I would like to ask everybody to stand and pray along with me. I am also so reminded here of, I believe it was in St. Matthew's Gospel that says, in life, he is humble. In death, he must be exalted. And so together we say, Almighty and eternal God, who through Jesus Christ has revealed your glory to all nations, please protect and preserve Belize, our beloved country. Rest in peace, Uncle George, and we will continue your fight. verses 23 and 24 it says the Lord makes firm the steps of the man who delights in him though he may stumble he will not fall for the Lord upholds him with his hand George Price was a man of faith and a man who proved that faith by his actions for this God blessed him with long life a family and a nation that loves him As Belizeans, 
Let us honor his legacy by building a prosperous nation. As a party, we must live by the creed he gave us and serve the people, especially the less fortunate. Go now in peace, Mr. Price, dear leader, dear friend. You have done your good work. You did not stumble. You did not falter. You never let us down. I have already suggested that Mr. Price was able to combine immersion in the daily business of running a country and shaping a nation with an unceasing intellectual curiosity. And his search for new knowledge and new ideas was never limited to the purely political. Actually, he was something of a Renaissance man. He wrote poetry, played the piano, loved classical music and the arts, and read widely in the sciences, theology, philosophy, and literature. The PUP will never have another leader like George Price. But then, but then, the country will never have another Prime Minister like George Price. I cannot end this short reflection on Mr. Price without some comment on his complete faith in God. While he didn't wear his piety on his sleeve, his belief was absolute. Graham Greene was, as I understand it, one of his favorite authors and an acquaintance and perhaps even occasional correspondent. But the tortured questionings and falls from grace of Greene's whiskey priest were not for Mr. Price. He had no doubt of the need to always do right and of the omniscience and omnipotence of his eternal creator. <laughs> Naipaul closes that 1969 piece with a story from Mr. Price. I have this recurring dream, Mr. Price said. I am in church. Someone is saying mass, Turton, my old employer, or Pinks, one of his managers. And I wonder why I, who would so much like to be up there, I'm not, and that old sinner is. <laughs> well, let no one doubt that Mr. Price is up there now. <laughs> he is united at long last and saying mass with his almighty God. <laughs>